Welcome back, and today we're reviewing another new case. This one from NZXT, it's called the H6 Flow. It's a dual chamber case, but in a little bit smaller form factor than you would see from like a Lee & Lee 011 Dynamic. So let's get into it. And first thing, just like last time, we're gonna start with the packaging and some of the accessories. So. The box, like most boxes, is pretty sturdy. You can see that it comes with some styrofoam. Who shocked me and a plastic liner for the case cover. Now, unlike the NV5, which we reviewed recently, this has just some, you know, cheap styrofoam to protect it, which is not gonna do you a lot of good if you have to ship it more than once or if it comes into contact with any sort of serious damage, that styrofoam is really gonna protect it maybe once. Also, you know, comes with plastic. They say it's kind of recyclable, but I mean, let's be real, this is not really getting recycled in any meaningful way and neither is that styrofoam. They cheaped out both on the protection for the case as well as the bag on there and kind of chose things that aren't super green. You would hope if they're gonna choose something that's not sustainable, it would at least be overly protective. So not great there. As far as accessories, you get a little pamphlet that shows you how to put everything together and lists out all the accessories that come in the box. And then in here you have an accessory kit, which actually you have to unbolt this drive bay to get out. Just like that. And then in the kit comes with the standard slew of screws for hard drives, fans, holding in your motherboard, an extra standoff, and a little tool for removing standoffs if you need to move them around, and a couple of short zip ties. Pretty standard stuff, really. Next, let's look at the I.O. for the front of the case. It's actually all down here at the bottom, which actually looks really nice. You've got just a power button, a couple of USB-A 3.0 ports, a USB-C port and a headphone jack. In typical NZXT fashion, all of these panels come off really easily. Some have a screw on them, but most of them just pop right off. In order to access your fans, they just pop right out. If you need to access the top, pops right out. Very easy, very convenient. And because of all the unique shapes of the case, it's pretty difficult to accidentally put it in the wrong way. In the engineering industry, we would call that a Pokio. Included in the case are three non-RGB PWN fans, all placed right here in this intake spot. In addition to that, you can have 320 millimeter or 140 millimeter fans along the top, two more 140 millimeter only fans along the bottom, and then along the back, you've got another spot for a 120 millimeter fan. Similar to their H9 flow case, the power supply is mounted up near the top of the case, with a lot of space near the bottom. I found this to actually be really beneficial for cable management, especially if you happen to have an RGB hub or additional drives. It keeps all of your power cables out of the way so that you can use this bottom space effectively. One interesting thing that I noticed about this case, because this is the second unit that I've bought, the paint job on it is actually a little bit inconsistent. This one feels really nice and smooth, very professional. The first one that I got actually had a very gritty rough texture on it. So maybe they're still working out some of the kinks in their manufacturing process, but there is definitely some inconsistency in quality there. Looking at the interior, there's some things that you'll notice that are different from some of the other cases. There's no rubber grommets on any of these pass-throughs. There's a big solid pass-through all along the top here. And again, another solid pass-through all along the bottom, which is really nice for getting your cables through with minimal difficulty. And like I said, you can put 240 millimeter fans on the bottom, which is super useful for getting fresh air to your GPUs. And the only other downside that I've noticed while looking at it is there appears to be no actual filters on this case. In the H7 flow, the H9 flow, in cases from other brands, you'll see filters on the bottom and anywhere you might have an intake fan. The only filtering that you have is just this really fine mesh material, which is gonna stop some amount of dust, but it's not gonna be anywhere near as effective as an actual screen filter that could be put in there. So we've got some of our initial impressions. Let's build a PC inside of this case and provide some final thoughts. Hey, that worked. Okay. So this is what it looks like with a computer inside of it. Starting at the back, we actually did a custom paint job on this one, which looks really amazing. With everything inside, you can see back here, there's lots of room for cable management. And this one didn't actually have any sort of RGB hub or additional drives, but you can tell that there's plenty of space in here to add RGB hubs, a couple of drives, Maybe if you needed a, an extra fan hub in there, all of that would easily fit with the power supply sitting up here on top. And the way that they put the cable management here at an angle really allowed us to have that bundle be pretty thick without actually protruding past the plane 
of where this back panel would go. Now back to the front. You can see here we've got the 240 millimeter fans down there. They fit flush underneath this plane, which is really nice. You don't lose any of your lower PCIe slots due to adding bottom fans. We were able to swap out those non-RGB fans pretty easily with some RGB ones from Deepcool and the AIO easily fit along top. We still had plenty of access to these headers, which is really nice when you're building. You don't have to pull fans out to reach the CPU header, AIO header, or the RGB stuff up there. Really, really convenient. We've also fit a pretty large GPU in here. This is a 7900 XT from XFX. It even has an extra long support that, that attaches to it. There's another inch of space where you can have an even wider graphics card. And in terms of thickness of the graphics card, there's still a decent amount of space there. Although if you had something like a 4080 or 4090, you wouldn't want it to be much wider than this because of that more fragile power cable. So all in all, a really nice case, pretty easy to build in and actually has a really unique look. Obviously this one has an extra unique look with all the paint, but having this sort of chamfered corner with the intake fans going there, but still having the dual glass panel design honestly looks really good and unique. And for the price of only 110 to $120, depending on if you get the black or the white version, I would highly recommend this case. If you're looking for something that has plenty of space for any components that you might wanna do, and has this really cool style to it. All in all, I give it an eight and a half out of 10 with just a couple of things being negative. The fact that it only allows you to use 140 millimeter fans on the bottom. While yes, it might not look as good with 120 millimeter fans, having the option is still really nice. The quality of the paint job was inconsistent between the two that we got. So there's reason to believe that that could happen to other people down the line. And it's a small thing and not having any grommets on the pass-throughs for the cables makes it not look quite as good, but really it's not that big of a deal. And like I said, this is recently released. So you should be able to find this on Amazon, NZXT or Newegg and we'll see you on the next one.